I am um, reading a new book. Um, I think it's Mansfield's Manly Men. Can you find out what that is, Tiffany? Is it Mansfield's Manly Men? Um, and uh, I just feel a great call to uh, be a better man, that we are supposed to be better men right now. Um, Mark thinks that if we lose the men and we lose the inner cities, Christendom is, is done, at least in the West. Yeah. Yeah, what's happened is, is that culture is made in the cities, and you think of it being upstream, downstream. So culture is made upstream in the city, and then it flows downstream into the suburban and rural areas. So a, a lot of people of faith, a lot of conservative families, husbands, wives, kids, they're in the suburbs, they're in the rural areas because cost of living, education, right. all the very real variables. Meanwhile, all the singles, college-educated culture makers are flooding into the cities, the very places that the churches have tended to flee over the generations prior. And the question is, is there an opportunity to plant churches, to go back and, and to re-evangelize major urban centers, especially, especially young men? Today, the, uh, the average guy who's in his 20s is less likely than the average woman to go to college, uh, to have a degree uh, upon graduation, to have a job, to go to church, even have a driver's license. There was an article, I think it was in the New York Times, saying that an increasing number of young single men in their 20s and early 30s don't even have a driver's license because they like to play video games and text and download porn on their phone while they're on their bus trip to wherever it is they're trying to go. So you have guys that have no vision of future, career, no intent of I mean, taking a gal on a date, maybe to get a wife out of the deal. Maybe you have a kid, you can't take them to Little League, you can't go pick up your groceries. I mean, they're not even thinking in terms of a legacy or a lineage or a future. How do you reach them? you got to tell them that they're wrong, that they're absolutely wrong, and they have no idea what they're doing, and that the culture has sold them a bunch of products, and it's just trying to make them addicted to porn and pot and substances and to take all the money out of their wallet and to get some out of their mom's wallet and rip them off because the fool's parade just keeps going to the ATM and hang, hang, handing away their future. I mean, guys just don't think about anything other than a good time, and it's about thinking about a good legacy, like not just what How life you will you live, but what legacy are you going to leave? How are you going to, I mean, I'm, you know, 20 years old. I, I it is so seductive what yeah. is out there right now. I don't have to, I but don't have to pay for it. can shave, man. I mean, it's, it's just a joke. I mean, and, and nobody looks at these guys and says, you didn't have a dad. You're addicted to porn. You don't have a clue. You don't have a plan. You're part of the problem. Stop smiling because you're the joke. I mean, nobody just tells them like that. But that's exactly what they need. And if they had a good dad, that's what he would have told them. And so I'm trying to think how you get people to walk into your church. You punch a guy, he goes and gets two friends because nobody's ever punched him. It's countercultural. It's revolutionary. Who right now is in the business of offending people? I mean, you do that, and all of a sudden, you're unique. All of a sudden, you're, you're, the, you're the rebel. You're the lawbreaker. You're, you're the punk rocker because you're the one who's standing up against the majority by telling people that, that God's not okay with certain behavior and that Jesus died and rose and hell's hot, forever's a long time, and they better pay attention. And it's, and it's saying it just like that. And so, and they come back. They come back and they bring friends. And sometimes they pick it in protest and then they get baptized later. But yeah, it, it's a little messy, but yeah. All right. Um, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to figure out how you put the first part of your um, message, which is um, nobody wants anything intolerant. Right. And they punch them in the face. Right. That's what's so amazing. No one else is doing it. I mean, the world is just filled with noise. And if you can cut against the grain, say something in a different tone with different content, something they've never heard. They're, initially, you're offended by it. You're like, I have never heard that. But now I'm interested because maybe, maybe I've been lied to because my thing ain't working and our thing ain't working. Maybe the bus I'm on is headed over a cliff and it's a good time to consider getting yeah, off. There's two things I think of. First of all, um, I have a good friend who's a um, professor at Yale and he said, Glenn, I look at the students and they know. They mm -hmm. know they've been lied to their whole life. They know their trophies mean nothing. Yeah. He said, we're treating them as if they don't know. They yeah. know this is a lie. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I, I believe so. And I believe reality hits post-graduation. All of a sudden, your mom's not paying your bills and the college isn't occupying your time. 
and somebody hands you a blank sheet of paper and says, the next 50 years, what are you going to do? And panic sets in because they have no idea. Because you can get a, a master's degree and not know how to balance your checkbook oh, no, or not, make a sandwich. I mean, they don't know what they're doing. Right. And unless you can get a job specifically on that, and even the people who have those degrees will come, some of these people will come in here and they still don't know what to do. They, they'll still, because they'll, they'll, they, they've never done anything right. before. They've just learned a bunch of stuff. And how to buy things. So are the, uh, are the, um, um, I have a problem sometimes with churches, um, and my own included, at times where it's not practical. It is not. Mm -hmm. It is not showing me. Yeah. How, show me what it means today. Yeah. Show me what this means. Yeah. What is the message today? Yeah. The message is turn from sin, trust in Jesus, start over, complete new start, rethink everything, replan everything begin an entirely new life. And so it's not Jesus is here to help you accomplish your vision for your life. Jesus is here to wreck that vision, give you a brand new vision, make you a brand new person, give you a brand new life. And, and, and that's, that's very controversial because the whole therapeutic culture and the coaching culture is you give me your vision and I'm here to help you accomplish wow. your dreams. And Jesus comes in with a wrecking ball and says, my job is to crush them and to give you a new identity. See, I, I would tell you, because I'm a recovering alcoholic and I'm just... just I, I took the wrecking ball to my life. And I have said this often um, that I, I feel I'm really the lucky one because mm -hmm. I got so low. I, I destroyed everything and everybody in my life mm -hmm. that I got so low that um, there was no place for me to go. I knew I couldn't do anything. Yeah. And so I had to have somebody else just tell me. Just, I, I surrender. I completely surrender. I'll do it your way. And... Um, that has really kept my feet on the right path, mm -hmm. you know, um, needing it um, so badly. I, I, I wonder, uh, I hope that there's enough people that don't need it, don't, don't need the lesson to be as deep as mine was, yeah. uh, per se, because we're in, we keep going down this road and we, we, we hit a really bad wall here soon. I mean, I'm concerned with, the, with technology and I mean, you're seeing it with porn. Oh, you yeah. start changing porn, and you rehardwire it. people's brains. brains. It's 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 affecting the same part of the brain as heroin. They get that hooked, and they're not even capable of a a marriage where they can enjoy their spouse because they're they're addicted to something well, it's, else. It's, it's also the nothing is real anymore. No, nothing is real. I mean, and we're from video we're games to online them. identity to pornography. It's all it's a all, world of fantasy, right? And and we're teaching our girls that there's nothing unique between you and a man. It's just you're the same. And so just go hang out with the guys. Well, I got news for you. If I were 20 and I could, you know, the, my, the idea of a date was come on over and hang out with my buddies while we play video games or whatever. Yeah. Didn't have to open the car door or anything. Yeah. Why not? Why well, not? And, and what's Until you figure, figure out it's And, and as a pastor, I turn on the flip side. Young guys are sexually addicted and young women are sexually assaulted. And so it's an epidemic. One in three, one in four women is sexually assaulted. One in six men. That's just reported. I mean, it's the most underreported crime. So the sexual addiction and then the, 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 the sexual assault, it's, it's epidemic. It's unbelievable what happens when people lose sight with reality and start treating one another like objects. It's I was, devastating. I was sitting um, at uh, Billy Graham's birthday party, and I leaned over to his daughter, and I said, um, you know, there's a lot of pastors around the world that, that aren't doing anything, and maybe it's time to clean some of the pastors out. And... Um, and get people to realize that we're all called. We're all supposed yeah. to be doing this. Because I think there's a lot of people who I've gone dead inside, in the pulpit and in the pew. And there's got to be a, a new Whitfield moment and a new calling that is heard by people. Do you agree or disagree? Yeah, I would say as things get darker, there's, there's seasons where there's been revival or awakening. And unless one of those is in our future, um, that road looks like we're not heading into great light. Call to Resurgence is the name of the book. Uh, Mark Driscoll is the uh, author and pastor in Seattle. Mark, thank you very much. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. It. Yeah. Back in just a second. Ooh. 
uh, be a better man, that we are supposed to be better men right now. Um, Mark thinks that if we lose the men and we lose the inner cities, Christendom is, is done, at least in the West. Yeah. Yeah, what's happened is, is that culture is made in the cities, and you think of it being upstream, downstream. So culture is made upstream in the city, and then it flows downstream into the suburban and rural areas. So a, a lot of people of faith, a lot of conservative families, husbands, wives, kids, they're in the suburbs, they're in the rural areas because cost of living, education, right. all the very real variables. Meanwhile, all the singles, college education, download porn on their phone while they're on their bus trip to wherever it is they're trying to go. So you have guys have no vision of future, career, no intent of I mean, taking a gal on a date, maybe to get a wife out of the deal, maybe you have a kid, you can't take them to Little League, you can't go pick up your groceries. I mean, they're not even thinking in terms of a legacy or a lineage or a future. How do you reach them? You got to tell them that they're wrong, that they're absolutely wrong, and they have no idea what they're doing, and that the culture has sold them a bunch of products, and it's just trying to make them addicted to porn and pot and substances, and to take all the money out of their wallet, and to get some out of their mom's wallet, and rip them off because the fool's... I am um, reading a new book. Um, I think it's Mansfield's Manly Men. Can you find out what that is, Tiffany? Is it Mansfield's Manly Men? Um, and uh, I just feel a great call to... It just keeps going to the ATM and hang, hang, handing away their future. I mean, guys just don't think about anything other than a good time. And it's about thinking about a good legacy. Like, not just what How life you will you live, some... but what legacy you're going to leave. How are you going to... I mean, I'm, you know, 20 years old. I, I, it is so seductive what yeah. is out there right now. I don't have to... I don't it's have boys to pay who can for shave, man. I mean, it's it's just a joke. I mean, and, and nobody looks at these guys and says you didn't have a dad. You're addicted to porn. You don't have a clue. You don't have a plan. You're part of the problem. Stop smile culture makers are flooding into the cities, the very places that the churches have tended to flee over the generations prior. And the question is, is there an opportunity to plant churches, to go back and, and to re-evangelize major urban centers, especially, especially young men? Today, the, uh, the average guy who's in his 20s is less likely than the average woman to go to college, uh, to have a degree uh, upon graduation, to have a job, to go to church, even have a driver's license. There was an article, I think it was in the New York Times saying that an increasing number of young single men in their 20s and early 30s don't even have a driver's license because they like to play video games and text and die.